Can somebody remind me what inductive reasoning is? Inductive reasoning. What was it, Ben? Using patterns. Can somebody tell me the example I gave for inductive reasoning or give one of their own? Because you did what? You saw it do that. You saw the sun rise in the east and set in the west last month. And for the last 30 days, it's been doing the exact same thing. So you think that tomorrow the sun's going to rise in the east and set in the west. You got that just by observing patterns. So this next type that we're going to talk about is called deductive reasoning. We do not use patterns to do deductive reasoning. We use definitions, rules, properties, and our properties are basically rules, like the inverse property of addition, those types of things. Those are rules that let us do things. Postulates. What was our definition for a postulate? Um, it's not. It's a fact that we can't prove, but it's something that everybody agrees upon. It's something that's. It's almost obvious, you know, based off of the conditions that we're working with, and laws of logic. So unless I'm asking for an inductive reasoning type thing, these are the only things that you can use to explain why something's true or false. You have to justify it with definitions, rules, properties, postulates, and other proven facts, which in this class are called theorems and laws of logic. This is what we are going to cover today are the two basic laws of logic that we're going to use. There are several of them. The first one is called the law of syllogism. And to me, the law of syllogism is basically common sense. In your book, it says, if P then Q. I'll have a second statement that says if Q, then R implies that if P, then R. If it's Tuesday, then I'm going to eat tacos. If I eat tacos, then I get heartburn. If it's Tuesday, I'm going to get heartburn. That's an example of law of syllogism. Any questions on that one? Do you actually get heartburn when you eat tacos? No. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't eat them. So, there is a similar property in arithmetic. That similar property looks like this. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Does anybody remember what the name of that property was in arithmetic? Starts with the letter T. And they go, choo, choo. Transitive property. And this one would be called the transitive property of equality. And this should make common sense to you. That's why I said the law of syllogism is almost like common sense. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Okay. Notice that these two things have B equal to something. Okay. If Chi is the same height as Clayton, and Clayton is the same height as Evelyn, what does that imply about Evelyn and Kaya's height? They have to be the same. 
even though their heights aren't the same, but in that condition I said they were. So the law of syllogism states that if P, if you have a statement that says if P, then Q, and another one, if Q, then R, that implies if P, then R. There will be examples of you needing to be able to use the law of syllogism. Okay? Or to identify whether or not you're using the law of syllogism. So anytime you've got something that looks kind of like the transitive property, that is the law of syllogism. Your next definition was for the law of detachment. Okay? And the book states, if the hypothesis of a true conditional statement is true, then the conclusion is also true. If it's raining, then I'll carry an umbrella. It's raining outside. What does that imply? I'm going to be carrying an umbrella. If it's Tuesday, then I'm going to eat tacos. It's Tuesday. I'm going to eat tacos. Well, no, that's, I'm not going to get heartburn because I didn't do that side. I'm just doing this side. So, please open your books to page 79. You are there? Are there? Okay, actually, turn it to page 80. Guided practice one. So, guided practice one says if 90 degrees is less than the measure of angle R, which is less than 180 degrees, comma, then angle R is obtuse. Okay? I look at this thing and I know the measure of R is equal to 155 degrees. Based off of this if-then statement and this fact, what can you say? I just need to say one thing. You're overthinking it. If the measure is between 90 and 180, then the angle is obtuse. The angle is 155 degrees. Therefore, R is obtuse. obtuse. That's all you have to say. Angle R is obtuse. So if you have an if-then statement and the hypothesis is true, you can just write down that the conclusion is true. Remember our truth tables? True, true implies true. So that's what you're able to, to do. Let's look at um, example two. It reads, if Janelle gets a job, then she can afford a car. If Janelle can afford a car, then she will drive to school. Can somebody give me the conclusion based off of the law of syllogism? If Janelle takes the car and goes back to school. Actually, that was, read it again carefully. That, that was actually one of her statements. Ben. If Janelle has a job, then she'll drive to school. The first one is she has a job, she can afford a car. If she can afford a car, she'll drive to school. If she has a draw, job, skip the middle, she will drive to school. Any questions on those two examples? The other parts of the homework actually have you identifying whether you're using the law of syllogism or the law of detachment. The homework for section 2.3 isn't rough. There is a lot of writing or there could be a lot of writing in it because you are dealing with if-then statements that you'll have to write out.